The First Minister joins me now from Glasgow. Good morning to you, First Good Minister. Good morning, Andrew. Can I ask, first of all, is it your priority to have a negotiation as Scotland with Brussels to allow Scotland to more or less seamlessly stay inside the EU? Uh, it my short answer to that is yes, but let me perhaps expand on uh, the Please position do. that I find myself in. You know, the first thing I should say is I didn't want to be in this position this weekend. I hoped very much and campaigned uh, to help persuade people across the UK to stay in the EU, but obviously people in England have voted differently to people in Scotland. Scotland voted overwhelmingly to remain a member of the European Union. So, you know, my challenge now as First Minister is to work out how I best protect Scotland's interests, how I try to prevent us been taken sure. out of the EU against our will with all of the deeply damaging and painful consequences that that will entail. Now, you know, independence is not my starting point in this. Protecting Scotland's interest is my starting point. But if it is the case that uh, looking again at the question of independence becomes the only way in which we can protect Scotland's interest, then that is a debate and a conversation and a decision that the people of Scotland have a right to, to take over the next period. But in all of okay. this, it's about protecting Scotland's interest. Right. And the last point I would make is this. If we do find ourselves in the position of looking again at the independence question, this is not going to be a, a rerun of the 2014 referendum. The context and the circumstances totally have changed dramatically. The UK that Scotland voted to remain within in 2014 doesn't exist anymore. Uh, and this is okay. a case of how do we best so, protect the stability uh, and the interests of Scotland. So you would like to be Prime Minister of an independent country, but you're First Minister of a country that Absolutely. is not independent. So Absolutely. how can you lead a delegation, as it were, to Brussels and argue for Scotland's interests while Scotland is well, still inside the UK? The, the reality is, Andrew, that? well, I, I'm certainly going to seek to do that. The reality is we're in unprecedented territory here. You know, I've heard people over the last couple of days talk about the rules that will apply to the Article 50 process. The reality is there are no rules. There is no precedent. This is something that's never been done before. What will happen from here on in will be a matter of negotiation. Now, my challenge, but also my responsibility as First Minister, is to seek to negotiate uh, to protect Scotland's interests. Now, I therefore... Have I'm you going spoken to, to anyone yet in Brussels look, about this? Look, I, I will be speaking to people in Brussels over the next few days. Uh, I haven't uh, done that yet. Uh, you know, we're in uh, a period of only a couple of days since this vote happened. Sure. Uh, but my, my priority is to seek to protect Scotland's interests in right. uncharted territory, and that's going to be my guiding so, principle. Now, are, are there challenges for Scotland in this? Of course there are. But what I want right. to do is have an open, honest okay. conversation with people in Scotland about how we best lead this country okay. forward. There are two options in terms of the way forward as regards Brussels. One, you have a successful negotiation with Brussels, which mm -hmm. allows Scotland, as it were, to stay inside the UK and then at the time of Brexit to move more or less seamlessly back into the EU. That's option one. That seems to be being turned down by people in Brussels today. If they well, turn it down, then you have to go into the queue to join as a new independent well, country. Which, I, which would you prefer? Look, there are a number of options that are potentially open here. I'm not going to be rushed into saying this is the best option or that's the best option. I, I don't think it is the case to say that anybody in Brussels has turned anything down. If you're talking, to, talking about a story in the Mail on Sunday today, I don't think it will surprise anybody in Scotland to see the Mail on Sunday pour cold water on our democratic aspirations. It, it's what they do. But the, the substance of that story goes back to the point I made earlier on, appears to be, you know, here are the rules that will apply with the Article 50 process. There are no rules. There is no precedent. So my job uh, over the, the coming days, weeks and months is to get in there and to seek to discuss right. and negotiate the best way forward for Scotland. And I'm going to do that in a way that as okay. far as possible tries to unify people in Scotland right. behind what is in our best interests. You are still part of the UK at the moment. There are suggestions from the Leave campaigners that they want Scotland and Wales and Northern Ireland to be part of the UK-wide delegation to go to Brussels to discuss the terms of exit. Would you be part of that or would you think that was ridiculous? Look, I, you know, I will do everything to protect Scotland's interests, but let me be clear, Scotland voted to stay in the European Union. We, we made it very clear. You know, it's more than 60% of people across Scotland voted to stay. Every single local authority area I in know, Scotland yes. voted to stay. It was overwhelming. It was emphatic. So, of course, in every eventuality, my priority is to protect Scotland's interests, but my starting point here is to protect Scotland's interests within the European Union. Uh, because this is not just okay. a, a matter of principle. What, know, what is I going understand. to happen? No, this is important. What's going to happen with the UK is that there are going to be deeply damaging 
and painful consequences of the process of trying to extricate the UK from the EU. I want to try and protect Scotland from that. I don't want to see the damage done to our economy, to our society, right. to our culture, to our place in the world that will come from okay. this. My job ba is to try to protect us from that. Back at the time of the 2014 referendum, one of the problems the Yes campaign had was over the currency. Hmm. Presumably that is now, that you, you can't share the pound with a well, UK that's outside the EU while being in the EU. You would have to go for the euro well, now, no. wouldn't you? No, I, I don't think that's the case, but let me try and take this step by step. Firstly, and this comes back to the point I made, we're in very different circumstances to those that pertained Absolutely. in 2014. Mm. And, and one of the important differences is, in a sense, and I know this might you know, initially sound a bit odd, but this would not be a, a, a decision about Scotland leaving anywhere. This would actually be a decision about Scotland staying, uh, and therefore the moral... Uh, argument about us retaining okay. the current terms that we have would be even stronger than in 2014. But, you know, the second just, point just is sorry, this... Coming, coming back to the currency, if you wouldn't mind. Well, OK. But on the currency or any other issue, I am not saying here just now that there are not questions and challenges that Scotland would have to face up to. I'm not going to be rushed in today to uh, giving definitive answers on that, because as a country, we've got to work through what these issues are. But the point uh, that I think is very important is that as we do this, that 2014, I, I was convinced okay. in 2014 that independence was best for Scotland. But understandably, some people in Scotland saw it as a choice between a step into the unknown with independence and the security and the stability, you, the known you, quantity of sure, the UK. Sorry to jump That's in. not the case just now. But that uh, is the, why the Scotland's that continued membership of the EU exist. is so important, isn't it? That's why Scotland's continued membership of the okay. EU is so Absolutely. critical. My point is that if you can't get back in again, as it were, until the UK has left, which seems the likelier thing well, at the moment. Well, hold on a second, gonna, Andrew. That's, there is no, you don't, you don't there is no that. sense. Well, no, I don't, because we're in uncharted territory right now. For, for anybody to say right now, you know, it, it's the likely option that Scotland would have to sort of wait to get back in. We're, the whole point here is that our argument is that we don't want to leave. It's not that we want to leave and get back so, in. We want so you to need, stay. So you need that voice to be heard. While you are still part of the UK, how do you Absolutely. go about doing well, that? Have you I, assembled a, a delegation to go well, there? Have you got any timetable? Who do you intend to speak to? Well, I intend to, I, I've set this out, the Scottish Cabinet met yesterday. And again, in, in what I'm saying here, I'm not suggesting for a second that the path ahead is without complexity or it's easy. The Scottish Cabinet has uh, decided and made very clear that in the, the days, weeks and months to come, we are going to seek discussions with the European Union institutions, uh, with other member states to explore all options for giving effect to the democratic will of the Scottish people. That's how now, I'm going to proceed. Is, and my is, guiding principle sure. is the best interests of Scotland and protecting what Scotland voted for. There is one other thing clearly you all have to think about, which is that if Scotland is a member of the EU and England isn't, there then has to be a border, doesn't there? A proper border with controls well, again, and checks and all of that. Well, you know, I, whatever happens with Scotland, this issue of a border is going to have to be resolved in the context of Ireland, of course. And Absolutely, some of these issues yes. that would arise for Scotland, not all of them I accept, but some of these issues that would arise for Scotland in these circumstances arise anyway in the Irish context and are going to have to be resolved. So, you know, these are issues that are, are live. I certainly don't want to see in any circumstances a border between uh, Scotland and England. Whatever happens here, England is our nearest neighbour and will right. always, I hope, be our best friend. End. But these are circumstances in which so Scotland hasn't to chosen time. to be. Well, no, I, I'm not prepared at this stage. You may have to go into a referendum. Sorry, you may have to go into a referendum saying the currency is the euro and well, there will look, be a no, border with England. And that's going to be I tough think, for you. I think you're jumping several steps ahead of where we I'm, I'm not prepared. We are in uncharted territory. I'm a territory. young gazelle. That's what I do. We're, we're in uncharted territory, Andrew. Uh, not because of choices Scotland has made, because of choices that have been made elsewhere and I'm not prepared at this stage to just accept that certain things are inevitable. Uh, I have a job to do to protect Scotland and to negotiate okay. the best way forward for Scotland. Now, I look on at what's happening in West Westminster just now with a sense of utter despair on behalf of people across England and other parts of the UK as that vacuum of leadership, both in the Tories and Labour, develops. But what I'm absolutely clear about, there's no vacuum of leadership in Scotland. Uh, as First Minister, I'm going to do everything I possibly can to prevent Scotland being okay. taken out of the European Union because the consequences of allowing us to sure. be so will be devastating. We're now out of time. I want you to answer this question, if you wouldn't mind, very, very okay. quickly. We're going to get a new Conservative Prime Minister. What happens if that Prime Minister says to you, Nicola Sturgeon, you had a referendum in 2014, I will not allow you to have another one now? Well, you know, I just think people in Scotland would find that completely unacceptable if we were in the situation where the Scottish Parliament had voted uh, for a second referendum because it saw it as the it best anyway? way. 
Look, again, you know, I don't think it is acceptable in the context we find ourselves in of anybody trying to dictate to Scotland right. the terms of how we seek to take the country forward. It's simply not acceptable and I would caution any future Prime Minister against putting themselves in that position. Nicola Sturgeon, thank you very much for talking to us this thank morning. You. First Minister, you've said that you will be engaging in talks as a matter of priority with Brussels um, to protect Scotland's interests. What do you mean by that? Well, I mean that I want to be able to find a way that gives effect to how people in Scotland voted on Thursday and people in Scotland voted to stay in the European Union. Um, I am not prepared to stand by and watch Scotland be taken out of the European Union against our will with all of the deeply damaging and painful consequences that that will entail. So, you know, we're in uncharted territory. This Article 50 process has never been triggered before. This has never been done before. What will happen from here on is a matter of negotiation. So what I will be seeking to do is to negotiate to protect Scotland's position and uh, I will want to explore all options for doing that. Now it yep. may be that the only option uh, is for Scotland to look at becoming an independent country but I'm not starting uh, from that uh, premise, I'm starting from the premise of what do we need to do to protect Scotland's interests. So can I actually sort of just dig a little deeper on what you mean yep. by this? Do you think it is conceivable that with Scotland as part of the United Kingdom, Scotland could have a sort of, I don't know, an associate membership of the European Union and the single market. You, Scotland, in a sense, could remain part of that. Uh, uh, of course, it would mean that you'd have to have free movement and all of that of, of, mm -hmm, of, mm -hmm. of people from the rest of the European Union. But you'd like to explore whether within yes. the United Kingdom you could, in a sense, be a sort of... And, and, you, and, and you, you don't think that's just completely implausible? Uh, I, don't, I don't think anything at the moment is completely implausible and I don't yeah. think we should start from that premise. Um, do I equally, you know, I'm able to sit here today and say it's absolutely possible? No, but I want to explore all options that might be open to us because the alternative to doing that is just to shrug my shoulders and say that Scotland's going to be dragged out of the European Union against our will. And if I did that, I don't think I'd be fit to be First Minister uh, of Scotland. So I'm going to explore all options. You know, we are in uncharted territory um, and I don't think anybody can say, whether for Scotland or for the UK as a whole, uh, with certainty what happens next. But, you know, a couple of certainties uh, we do have. Firstly, the, the process of extricating the UK from the European Union is going to be deeply, deeply damaging. Uh, probably the most damaging thing that's happened to the UK in, in post-war history. And I don't want to simply sit back and accept that Scotland is going to have to suffer those consequences. Uh, and the second thing is... The UK that Scotland voted to be part of in the independence referendum in 2014 is not going to exist in the future. The, the circumstances and the context have completely changed. Now, I'm, I'm not pretending there's not serious complexities for Scotland in this as we move forward, but my job as First Minister is to give the leadership and the direction to seek to navigate a path through this for Scotland that protects our interests and unifies the country as much as possible. And, you know, that's in stark contrast, I think, to the complete vacuum of leadership that we're seeing unfold before our eyes at Westminster right now. Now, I understand that you believe that under devolution powers, Scot the Scottish Parliament would have to vote uh, on the issue of Brexit and that Brexit couldn't actually happen without the approval of the Scottish Parliament. Could you envisage situ a situation in which the Scottish Parliament blocked the UK leaving the EU? Well, I think that's the wrong way to look at it. This, this uh, process that you're talking about is it's referred to as the legislative consent process. And yeah. what it was designed to do is, is ensure that if Westminster is legislating on issues that directly impact on yeah. the devolved responsibilities of Scotland, that can't happen without the Scottish Parliament's consent. Now, you know, we undoubtedly will have a, a, a disagreement between the Scottish and the UK government about whether this process applies here. We've had similar uh, discussions recently over the trade union bill and proposals to repeal the human rights. Rights Act. I, I think it would be inconceivable that uh, the, the consent of the Scottish Parliament wouldn't be required to, to legislation in this context. But that but what follows from that? I'm not sure what well, follows from that. You know, I, the Scottish Parliament would be acting on the basis of what's in the interests of of Scotland, what gives effect to how people in Scotland have voted. You know, we are in completely unprecedented times here. I absolutely respect that the people of England voted a certain way and I, I respect how they voted but the people of Scotland voted to stay in the European Union. I'm the First Minister of Scotland. I have to in these circumstances act on the basis and from the principle of seeking to protect 
Scotland's interests and how Scotland voted. Um, and I'll try to do that as, as honestly and as straightforwardly as I can. You know, we've, we've been thrust into a situation that is not of our making. I hoped, really, really hoped that the UK as a whole would vote to stay in the European Union. That didn't happen. I didn't choose to be in this situation. Uh, there will be many complexities ahead. And what I've got to do as First Minister is to seek to navigate the best possible path for Scotland through these complexities. Now, among the many extraordinary aspects of our current situation is we don't even yet know when we will formally notify the European Union that we are leaving. We don't know when this so-called Article 50 process will begin. I mean, there are some on the Leave side who think it could be a full year or so before that happens. In terms of your timetable for deciding when it becomes critical to decide whether to press for a referendum on independence, what is the trigger point? Is it going, is it, is it, is it going to the EU and saying formally we're leaving? Well, look, the, the, the decision-making timescale, I guess, for Scotland would have to be within the, the, the two-year period uh, that happens, that is triggered by the Article 50 process being yeah. started. Now, clearly, I don't know when that's going to happen. Uh, I, I think what's happening at Westminster is shameful. Uh, you know, and, and for Leaf campaigners who have put us into this position, now saying, oh, well, there's no urgency to go on with it, is just inexplicable. But for, you know, the, the government at UK for Labour, for people who have a responsibility to try to lead the UK through this difficult set of circumstances, to be completely abdicating that responsibility, and that's what they appear to be doing, is frankly unforgivable. What I'm not prepared to have in Scotland is any vacuum of, of leadership. I've got a responsibility in circumstances that I didn't choose to try to lead Scotland through this in a way that protects our economy, that protects our society, that protects our place in the world. And, you know, if we find ourselves in the position of a second independence referendum, it's not simply going to be a rerun of the last one. The yep. circumstances have changed. The UK that we voted to stay part of doesn't exist anymore. Uh, and actually, you know, it'll be a question of tr looking at the option of independence as a way of staying where we are just yeah. now and a way of protecting stability. Uh, and that's a very different set of circumstances to the ones that pertained in 2014. Now, tragically, we're running out of time. But if I could just ask you, I'm afraid a hard question, but if it's possible mm. to be brief on it, which is if Westminster were itself not to, in a sense, authorise a referendum, would you just go ahead and get the Scottish Parliament to authorise it? Look, if the Scottish Parliament votes uh, to have another referendum in circumstances where that's the only thing that we think we can do to protect our interests, then frankly it is inconceivable that a Westminster government who have thrust this situation upon us uh, would seek to block that, and I would seriously caution any Prime Minister, present or future, uh, against doing that. It would be completely democratically unacceptable. Nicola Sturgeon, First Minister, many thanks. Thank you.